www.wecan702.org. LV Rocks. Noise from Vegas. LV Rocks. Noise from Vegas. The following is a live LV Rocks original webcast. Visit LVRocks.com for studio cam and live chat room. Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Kurt Dukach. Today in the uh, studio, I have William Beach Baker. We have Perry Haichu. And behind the boards, we got DJ DG making us sound great. Uh, today, we are missing one of our studio mates, Michael McCullough. We mm -hmm. wish him the best. He went in for a procedure last week and uh, turned out to have a major surgery after that. And he's going to be home for the next couple of weeks recovering. So... Michael, if you're out there li listening, we wish you well and hope you get better soon. Absolutely. Yeah, get better yeah. soon. Uh, yeah, Mike's uh, been with us since the beginning, and uh, he's our political director, so he keeps pretty busy with that, and I'm sure he'll be sorely missed because this is uh, quite a crazy political season, is it not? Yes, it so, is. So, uh, Michael, get better, and uh, and I know th I know you're going to try to work a little bit at home. Try not to work too much, okay? But we love you and we miss you. Well, we're hoping that he's feeling well enough in the next next week or two that maybe he can call in and yeah, yeah, yeah. We do want to do a way. few little things. I made a couple suggestions, but you know, uh, still, um, you know, get well, get well. Yeah. So, so uh, we've got some news coming out of the net me uh, medical marijuana programming program here. They're trying to streamline the issuance of the medical marijuana cards finally. So, uh, this is something that we can's been pushing for for quite a bit, and not only we can, but most everybody in this industry uh, is on I thought they've already side. kind of streamlined it a little bit. Is this a further continuation of that streamlining yeah, well process? They, they, right now they have it to where you can set up an account on, uh, on, their, on their website and uh, basically download your application from right there. Mm -hmm. um, but now that application still has to be mailed in. Uh, what they're working on and they, they foresee in the future is that, uh, that uh, you can mail that application in and, and turn that application in there right there online. And then what, what they're planning on trying to do is trying to issue temporary letters authorizing patients to purchase marijuana products before passing their background checks. So basically once they receive that application packet, you would receive a temporary letter saying this is good to go into it have a patient number and everything and you can use it to go into your dispensaries to purchase the cannabis before they go through all the background check and then you get that other letter saying you're approved so we're talking about same day registration and the ability to get your cannabis on the day you get your recommendation until it's not going to be same day it's probably going to be anywhere between three to five days okay from, from when you see the doctor and turn right. in the application that uh, they will mail out a letter to you saying that they've received your application this is your temporary use card until they put you through all the background checks and all right. that stuff that takes that couple of months that you know we're sitting here waiting for our stuff and not able to use our medicine no. so and what would happen uh, is if the person failed the background check after they've already received that letter the bureau would revoke the approval letter and deactivate the patient card number in the computer so so in the in the state system so that when that person went into the uh, into the dispensary they would pull up the, the patient number in the system on that letter and it would say that that patient would be no denied a patient and would be denied access to the mm -hmm. dispensary to buy their to buy their medicine oh, that sounds hmm. that sounds reasonable I hope yeah. it uh, I hope they're able to implement it yeah. sooner rather than later I heard there's quite a backlog so yeah we'll see what happens mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah that's a that's a big big improvement for us in this system and it's gonna make it so much better for these patients you know somebody who's really sick and you know battling an illness Sometimes we don't have two months to wait for our medicine. You know what I mean? Nor should yes, you have to wait no, two months. No, we don't shouldn't. have to wait that long or jump through so many hoops for any other medicine. And this yeah. is just the further destigmatizing of that and getting it to be treated as any other. So just yeah. keep fighting those fights. Yep. And uh, being uh, neighboring California with all the California people coming here with their 
instantaneous license, you know, where they can get a license just on the spot. Um, on, be, on, between the casino and on your way to the dispensary, you can get a California license. Well, I mean, my goodness <laughs> gracious, the state's got to really do something and think about that. Uh, and no one should really technically, like you said, have to wait. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm okay with, you know, a couple of days, you know, waiting, yeah. you know, to get the process and this and that. I mean, that that really shouldn't be either, but it's it's not something that, you know, is to make a big deal. And what really impresses me is the fact that this was something that we were working on to get changed in the next legislative session. This was one right. of our, our top points at our advocate, uh, you know, our training classes mm -hmm. and that. Um, this was one of the things that was our main goals in the next legislative session. Well, guess right. what? This frees us up to work on other things now. Right. No we doubt. Do. So we don't have to. We don't have to put our efforts into trying to fix the card program for patients to get their cards. Right. We can work towards other things. So now we can bump up, bump something up that was like our number six in the thing because we we're going to work on five issues, you know, to mm -hmm. target ourselves. Right. Well now we can bring in issue number six because issue number one is already taken care of itself before. The legislative session happens. Right, so. right. But th we did lay a lot of groundwork, and we want to thank the audience out there and all of you that come to our workshops and things that we've had over the years, the legislative workshops, uh, because um, we laid the groundwork for such issues like this. We've been we've been fighting for this, uh, just like we've been fighting for uh, patients' rights on other issues of being able to grow your own and continue those rights and everything else. So. Uh, stay active, stay involved. Go to weekend702.org and, uh, and join our site. We've, we're on meetup.com. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're all over the place. We have uh, events for the patients. We have events for non-patients. Uh, we're here to help you. We're nonprofit, and uh, we'll run this ball from here to heaven. But we need you on our team too. Okay. So go to weekend702.org and join us today and come out to some of our events. We got a lot of great stuff coming up. Yep. So, do we have any other news coming out of Nevada? Well, uh, we got yeah, we got a little bit of political news and some other things. Uh, uh, the, I, I found this interesting. The Democrats beat the GOP in April with voters registration. Uh, the the uh, Democrats uh, got an extra ten thousand voter registration in April mm -hmm. and are up five hundred and twelve thousand, uh, which is about forty percent. Uh, a uh, 40 percent increase in the state uh, of all the state active voters out there and the uh, republicans they're they're up to 35 percent but uh, they got a 5,000 member gain up to 447,000 in april um, they're significantly so they're still behind. behind the democrats quite a bit there but uh, 60,000 people yeah there's still between the two of them there's 15,000 more people you know mm. in the rolls that are voting and uh that's pretty impressive you, in a small. We're really kind of a rural state, you know. It's good to see that people are getting yeah. politically active and taking it, uh, taking interest in the process. Yeah. You know, getting themselves registered and trying yeah, and to figure out what they want to do. Is uh, two hundred forty-two thousand independents and in other party type of people, libertarians and whatever, which is nineteen percent of state voters. That's so that's impressive. Gaining, now you said just nineteen percent of the registered state voters yeah. identify themselves as independent openly mm -hmm. and choose to not go for the primary process or the caucus process well imagine some of them have primary like if you're american independent and they mm -hmm. have a candidate they might have a, a primary they might right okay uh libertarians certainly would yeah, but imagine how many people would flock to those potential independent parties if we had an open primary and those people were freed up to vote how they wanted oh, because i feel like you know that's one of the yeah, things that holds me back the caucus system is interesting some states have both like we do as uh, mm -hmm. and um you know, the caucus system was set up by the party to control, and right. they have all the control, okay? And, uh, and I've been a party officer most of my life, and I understand how that all works. And it can be good, but um, for grassroots organizing, if the grassroots are really in charge of the caucus. The problem gets to be is the party controls sometimes these caucuses and the rules, and that's what you have Bernie and, and, and uh, Trump and them bitching about. You know, and rightfully so, because, you know, the primary is a better reflection because the Republican Party is different people than it used to be 100 years ago. And so sure. the Democrats sure. are different. It's I mean, the different Kennedy people Democrats, than it was 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, both parties are screwed up. We all know that, folks. Come on. You know, they're all screwed up. Well, th I would have to say the, you know. the Republicans have made a bigger shift in the last 10 years than the Democrats. The Democrats are kind of still 
you yeah. know, along their same party lines. Whereas yeah. in the last 10 years, the Republican Party has just been turned upside down. Yeah, but so. I, I guarantee you this, uh, what the Trump thing's all about and what the Bernie thing's all about is these political parties are scared to death. Because, see, with, with Bernie and Trump, they're marginalized. If those guys get elected, they don't need these political parties, mm -hmm. okay? And the political parties are there to control the candidates, okay? They control the money. They control everything, how they vote, how they think, what they do, where they go to the bathroom. I'm telling you, that's the way it goes, you know? And that's a hard facts, folks, you know? The rookie politicians, the freshmen get in there, man, they're, about, they're so refreshing, you know? But bam, two or three terms later, they're just, they're a part of the system. It's one of the pack. Okay. But we can make a big difference because um, we're, the, we're this great little minority. And you know what? We're, we're representing the masses, the hidden majority out there. And we've got, a, we've got an incredible issue here. This issue is going to keep you busy for the rest of your life if you want to be involved in it. All right. So, but anyways, uh, uh, the voters uh, must register no later than May 24th to participate in the June 14th primary mm -hmm. election. So you've got uh, just a little more time, a couple weeks here, to the 24th of May to get registered, Republican, Independent, uh, whatever, uh, Democrat. Uh, get out there and vote for the party or the candidate of your choice, whether they agree with us or not, okay? Uh, that's the most important thing. And hopefully they will understand some of our points of view and we'll continue to win these battles and eventually win the entire war for the cannabis and hemp community that's right and, it, and if you want to know how to register to vote just go to our website wecan702.org what and a wonderful uh, site yep. <laughs> click, click on the the register to vote in the featured in the featured there and it'll take you right to the site and you can register online you don't even uh, don't even have to get out of your chair how about that uh, <laughs> we love that and it's handicap accessible yep exactly how about that so yeah you know, so check it out so. Work. Work. Uh, well, uh, i got a strange story out of uh from the reno gazette journal okay we love the, the Reno. The title is right? Family Matters, and uh, it's like an opinion piece. It was like a question to the editor or something like that. And the guy's like, living with children is the topic. Kick teen out of the house for smoking pot is the question. And the question is, I caught my 16-year-old smoking, smoking pot. I took everything from him and told him that the next time I catch him, he's out. What else can I or should I do? And the answer, the guy, you know, the guy that's uh, writing the article just says, look, you know, where are you going to kick him out to? You obviously didn't think that through very well because in the first place, it's possibly illegal in your state to emancipate a 16-year-old. Second, do you really think smoking pot is sufficient reason to kick a child out of the house and home? Let's put this into proper perspective. Pot is illegal in most states. Nonetheless, it's not in the same category as cocaine, heroin, or methamphetamine, regardless of what the federal government says. Right. Although it was the first drug used by many addicts, no one has ever conclusively proven that marijuana is either addictive, although it may be for minority users. Now, I know people who are addicted to you know, gambling or damn near anything. They mm. have a I know people yeah. who are addicted to collecting comic books. Yeah. And it is what it is. Uh, or you know, they say it's a predictable gateway drug that uh, tends to uh, lead to increasingly hard drug use. But many to most people who smoke pot do so experimentally and never go any further and don't end up using it on a regular basis. In terms of statistics, it's far less potent than alcohol. And uh, the question becomes what consequences are realistic and enforceable. And this is the, the thing that happens with a lot of people, you know, not to totally, like, I know it's kind of off topic, but it just happened to be no, proposed right by a question topic. in Nevada. This is a, and, a local uh, issue you know, because, I mean, parents deal with stuff like this still today. And it is a kind of a conflict because you sort of feel guilty. Well, but the truth is... Uh, you know, pot's a lot different than it used to be. Well, a lot and of you have to deal with it differently with those kids too, because they they know stuff we we didn't know. Sure, and a lot of a lot of yeah. parents have pre-existing ideas of what cannabis is. They might have had a bad experience with it growing up, or had, you know, friends that didn't uh, grow up that end so well that they're like, oh well, you know, the only correlation I see between their non-successful lives and uh, what I can perceive is the cannabis use, because that's what differentiates, you know, that I don't smoke pot and they do. So that must be what it is. You know, not even yeah. looking at, you know, the mountains of possibility that could have been their childhood or, you know, whatever, just the fact that they don't really want to work or who, who knows, you know, right. what, what, uh, what leads people to make these decisions in life. But, uh, parents do tend to overreact a lot and kids just, I don't want to say kids want to be kids, but kids just want to lead their lives. And, you know, they have a lot, uh, 
I, at least I thought I had a lot going on when I was a kid. You know, I, I don't really looking back on it. I was uh, quite a simple life. But of course, the whole world's coming down when you're uh, when you're a young person and things are going wrong. So to have that added stress of a, of a parent who's co you have to constantly watch over your shoulder for when you're just trying to get through school is something that a lot of kids and families don't need. You know, they don't really need that stress. And uh, if you're, you know, performing well and you can handle your business, you know, I would... Uh, I would encourage people to be a little bit more, I don't want to say hands off, but more, I guess, tolerant would be the word mm. of their children's, yeah. uh, of their children's choices, as long as they're not, you know, like failing out of school right. and doing all kinds of stupid stuff, hanging out with bad people, you know, but uh, I guess the forbidden fruit argument would come to mind right away. The more you try to take something away or prevent, uh, prevent a young person from doing something, the more they're going to look the other way mm. or attempt to, you know, push back against you and that could lead like I said to negative consequences within the family structure because there could be a power struggle not only between the young person and the parent but between the different parents maybe one parent feels like one's being too strict or not strict enough mm -hmm. and then you know it, it's just a big you know it's a big yeah. issue I struggled through this as a young person also so you know if there are people out there who are struggling with that just please try to be uh, try to be patient yeah yeah, yeah I think one of the big things is uh, is being able to talk to your parents you know, okay. Uh, I call it the aunt and uncle syndrome, where it's, it's easier true. to talk to your aunts and uncles and grandparents than it is to talk to your parents about things like marijuana or alcohol or, any, or absolutely, girls or absolutely, guys yeah. or whatever. Right? I was talking with my parents like age fifteen, and then I didn't really talk with my parents about it until. I know, yeah. isn't it ma yeah. amazing how you do this gap thing, boom, no, bam? I, I, but you'll go and here. talk to your uncle or your yeah. or your cousin or your grandparents. You know, they're all cool. You know, well, I had uh, my best so, friends. Uh, uh, turn dad. to them if you have to, okay? Because your yeah. extended family and realize that uh, just because your parents didn't turn out the way your grandparents and aunt and uncles did, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, you one can talk my, to somebody. Uh, one of my you best know. friends' buddies, uh, Tim, you know, James's uh, dad, Tim, recently passed away from a heart attack, and he was kind of that that place for me where I could kind of mm. go and talk that that, uh, that kind of uncle so there you go yeah all right we well, all have them. it's about time for our first break so we're going to go to commercial here so uh, let's take a listen to our sponsors and we'll be back with our guest uh, uh, Margaret from Open Vapes so how about that see you in a little bit originating from Las Vegas Nevada you're listening to LV Rocks noise from Vegas Hi, I'm Armin Yemenijan, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the lowest prices in town and the highest quality medicine please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at essencevegas.com you can also call us at 702-978-7575 once again the number is 702-978-7575 attention medical marijuana patients did you know that your medicine could contain pesticides heavy metals and even mold are you really sure that you're getting the same potency every single time? Well, the answer to that question is simple. Digipath Labs. Digipath Labs is a state-approved laboratory run by scientists. So look for the Digipath Labs quality seal on your next medicine and on the door of your favorite dispensary. To learn more, go to digipathlabs.com. That's D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H labs.com. Getting Legal offers an informative and simple way for you to get your marijuana card. Why come to Getting Legal to get your marijuana card? We have a 99% approval rating and the lowest price in town. Avoid legal problems. Getting Legal can get you legal fast. Ready for a new start? Come in now and get relief from your chronic conditions affecting your quality of life. Call Getting Legal today at 702-979-9999. That's 702-979-9999. Or visit our website at gettinglegal.com to get your marijuana card today. From the soothing sounds of a water wall to the warmth of a wood interior and beautiful artwork, as soon as you enter Sahara Wellness, you are welcomed into a relaxing space where they strive to provide their patients with a healthy balance of mind, body, and spirit. That balance is achieved through a compassionate and knowledgeable staff who possesses both a passion for the medical cannabis industry as well as an unrivaled dedication to assisting those in need of a natural method of pain relief. Contact Sahara Wellness at www. 
420sahara.com or stop in their store at 420 East Sahara, Las Vegas, Nevada. LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Show. Coming to you live from the studios at LVRocksRadio.com. Today in the guests we have Margot from Open Vapes. So, <laughs> so uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Hello. I've been, been seeing your stuff at a lot of the dispensaries out here. Everywhere. So, yeah. And, uh, We're getting around. I've had a chance to try a couple of them. Unfortunately, not all yet. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to try. Well, they and they last a long time. Too, yes, you know? that's so true. You buy one, and usually two weeks later, it's finally running out. So. Right. Right. <laughs> Depending on your consumption rate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> Oh yeah, it's not the only thing I consume. So of course, right, <laughs> of course. Right. supplements, <laughs> supplements. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, you guys are producing out here in Nevada, and how many dispensaries That's are you in right, right now? I believe we're in about sixteen. 16? So not everywhere, but pretty much. Well, that's, that's a good chunk of them. I yeah. think there's only like twenty three or twenty four right, right now. Right. It's hard to tell. They keep opening up every. Yep. That's a good batting average. It seems like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I do know it takes me a couple of days to run around and visit them all now. It used to of be a, course. Used to be a one day trip to go drop off materials. Now, yep. it's, uh, now it's two days of driving around. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. So um, so uh, you guys uh, you got a couple of different lines. You got the regular line, and then you got your premium. What right. Is it called? So we've like, um we've recently even launched a new product. So we have our original formula that does have the carrying agent of polyethylene glycol added to it with our pre-activated cannabis oil. And then we also have our reserve line, which is a pure oil. So we have our reserve cartridge, um, which is 420 milligrams. And then our newest product is the craft reserve, which has an additional refining process added onto it, making it a more pure product. Uh, we're sure shooting for 90 plus percent THC on that one. And that's our craft reserve. So I'd say we've got two uh, different oil formulas that would be the original and then the reserve which is a pure oil now are, are you selling uh the reserve just in the tanks or are you going to be selling because that's 90 percent is is almost as good as rso right right you know uh we would is, like to introduce it as a syringe that people can use to line a joint take sublingually um, mm-hmm. topically however they choose to it's definitely hardware that we already have in process with our um, Dabaratus by Vaped, which mm. is part of Open Vape and Organa Brands licensing. So we could easily roll that out. I think they are working on ways to get that 90% closer to 98 to 100%. Mm. And then in that case, we would we would roll out with um, something similar, of course, rebranded from Rick Simpson Oil. Yeah. So yeah. can you? So technically, you can drink those. Is that what you're saying? The reserves, they're they're safe to. Yes, safe actually, to all of our products are safe to ingest, <laughs> but um, polyethylene glycol being generally recognized as safe by the FDA mm-hmm. and in um, infant inhalants, adult inhalants, it's used as a carrying agent for organ transplants or joint transplants, mm-hmm. hip and knee replacements. Um, it helps things bond together and. For us, it acts as a liquefying agent for our oils. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're getting that nice, robust, but lower milligram hit. You can ingest that safely. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Mm. There's a general perception among health nuts that poly- polyethylene glycol is unsafe because it's been banned in other countries. The United States does consider it safe. Have you guys experimented with like coconut oils and found that it's a bad a bad mixing agent or other kind of organic oils and tried to mix it and just like this is something that just works well and that's right that's why it's just as simple as that well it's really the safest thing that we've found to be able to use anything that is a vegetable based oil from our research and there's a lot of peer-reviewed studies out there that shows this um, anything like coconut oil mct oil vegetable glycerin it's okay when you're ingesting it but when you inhale it it can cause what's called popcorn lung which is a mild form of pneumonia that is permanent essentially irreversible right (laughs) So it can be um, it can be harmful, but you know that's the that's those vegetable based oils, right. whereas polyethylene glycol um, 
often confused with propylene glycol as well, is a much safer alternative to those. There you go. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yeah, and I, I tried. I tried filling up a, a vape tank with some of the coconut oil I made. I made some stronger coconut oil, and it it did not taste good at uh, all. A friend, <laughs> of, a friend of mine had a coconut <laughs> oil one in California. He said his car got hot and it leaked all over the place. Uh. <laughs> that happens, yeah. it gets, you know. It gets liquid at about 67 mm -hmm. degrees. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty watery, so. Yep. Yeah. And I love coconut oil, MCT oil for mm -hmm. ingesting, but yeah. not, you know, not uh, vaporizing. Yeah, that's yeah. my that's my that's my main form of ingestion is w the coconut when oil. When can we hope to see these craft ones? Because I've tried all your reserve line, mm -hmm. and they're they're pretty strong. Yeah, uh, definitely. When, wh wh what made you guys decide to step? Like, is this just a constant process? You're always looking to improve, you right? Know, and this is just the next evolution of your product yeah. line. Yeah. So Organa Labs is always trying to. Um, that's kind of our umbrella company. That's where our oil production standard operating procedures come mm -hmm. from, and they are always just trying to be at the top of innovation and new products products and with um, a new product called the clear that's come out of Oregon and Washington mm -hmm. we wanted to be right behind Oregon and Washington and represent our co2 oil is also being a clear high potency oil option for people mm -hmm. yeah wh what I like about that is like you got a syringe and it says it's 250 milligrams well as as a home patient not a grower and I want to make my own edibles it allows me to dose my own edibles right because I got a syringe, I put 250 milligrams in, and whatever I bake is going to be 250 mm -hmm. milligrams. So, mm -hmm. so it it I I see that as a really big advantage, and a lot of a lot of the patients I think will jump on board with you know yeah. that because you know edibles is a big way of uh, you know along with vaping a way people like to take their medicine, right? And people don't want to pay the high prices at the dispensaries right now, mm -hmm. and you know get these these low low THC medicines now because they're putting yeah. all the limits on them. Mm -hmm. So that that's huge. So, um, so you got some new batteries coming out too? Yeah. So we we always have new products in the works. Um, and that that syringe that I had talked about is something that we offer in other states. It's just with our launch um, in on March first this year here in Nevada. We're still adding on our CBD cartridges. We're still, um, you know, working on some things. So included in that is our new 2.0 variable voltage battery, as well as our craft reserve cartridge, um, which is also strain specific. And like I said, has that additional refining step to it. Mm -hmm. With our original formula and reserve pure oil, we're already doing a winterization process, decarboxylation, and then further refining techniques with the reintroduction of terpenes at the end of all of those refining techniques so that we're not harming them in any way throughout the process. Um, but with the craft reserve, we're then doing an additional particle separation that um, allows us to even further purify everything to get those percentages higher. And that uh, craft reserve cartridge works best with our 2.0 variable voltage battery because sometimes those higher potency oils tend to be a little bit thicker. And in that case, you have your low voltage for the best flavor and terpene profile. That's around 2.4 volts. And then you oh, have well. your medium, which is a full bodied, mild um, tasting. And that's going to be 3.2 volts and then the high is 4.0 volts and that's for um you know if you want to get the most potency out of that hit and and um have it be for a thicker oil that might cause a little bit of clogs here or there yeah i, I love the fact that you can adjust that uh, electricity and, and, and that power and all that and right it's been a long it, time coming yeah, yeah. in the day of conservation and stuff yeah. and sometimes uh this, I mean, I, I love this too because of the convenience of it, but you can adjust it, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it gets a little too smoky. Right, right. You know, yeah, definitely. It's, it's a little harsh. And it know. depends on the batch but of it's oil. It's still too. wonderful. It's a, the amazing technology, yeah. the simplicity. And I, I've never figured out how long it, I've never let it run out completely, so I don't yeah. know how long it lasts, <laughs> but they seem to last forever. Yeah, you that's, know. I get that question all the time from yeah. patients. How long does the battery yeah. last? Yeah. It's really hard to tell because everyone has yeah. a different consumption style, yeah. so. How well, much does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie right. Pop? <laughs> yeah. The world may never know. Ranger, and I'm going to try it one of these well, times way out. I've, I've, I've taken my batteries out uh, camping for the weekend, and I've never had a problem where I had to charge them, but yeah. I always have spares yeah. on me just in case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's why you get oh. two or three of them. It's like okay, well, right? Yeah, I was using these for years when I lived in California. Sold them like 
crazy out there. They're just mm. so discreet. Yeah. They're great for using in public if you're on the beach or something like that. And I always encourage people to... <sighs> A lot of my more traditional cannabis consumer friends who are more recreationally inclined uh, are more not so encouraged to spend the money to try these new products because they just like to roll up, roll up a joint mm. right. and just mm. walk down the street and do their thing. And mm -hmm. they don't, they don't care. Right. They don't care about perception. They don't care what they look like. They're just going to do their thing and to hell with it. And I think that really kind of, I'm not going to say sets the movement back, but impedes our progress. Mm -hmm. uh, if we want to be treated like everybody else, we need to blend in with everybody else. And the ability, like, why are you giving us the ability to do that? In, a, in an everyday format is really a blessing mm. to be able to not have that that anxiety when I go out in public and I want to medicate. It's just mm. like, oh, I, I, I know that the, the mom walking her kids down the street, there's she's not going to smell a damn thing or there's right. about a 95% chance, whether as there's a 95% yeah. chance they're going to mm -hmm. if I'm smoking flowers for sure. Yeah. It allows right. me to control my dose really appropriately. I can mm -hmm. take as much or as little as I want. It's great. Yeah, yeah. You, can, yeah. You, can, you can go out around, you know, out, out where the people are smoking right. and use and not even feel yeah. Well, most of the time you can't. There are occasions so. when you can sneak a place up. Yeah. Well, and people yeah. are like, oh, well, they'll never allow cannabis consumption in casinos. It's like, well, are you, are you so sure they'll never, ever allow anything like yeah. vaporizers or anything like that inside? Right. Well, you cannabis know? consumption would also include edible you know, of edible course. usage. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it's such yeah. a broad yeah. term. Like they can't know? even tell. And I, and I mean... I'm, I haven't been in a casino and sat down for a while. I've walked through a few, but there's people smoking all over. Of course. You know what well, I mean? it's so business Using decision. a little vapor pen, I mean, if it was me, I probably wouldn't even feel uncomfortable doing it because no. it's not offensive to anybody. You See, know? that's the whole thing. We don't want to yeah. make it offensive. We just want to be treated like people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, true. And generally, if you're doing something non-offensive, you don't have problems with it. You know, it technically may be illegal, but... Nobody around you is going to say, hey, stop that. Right. You know right. what I mean? Because exactly. they don't really even know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. right. It's that discreet. I think you'll start to see, if we're, if we're allowed to introduce these into a public casino setting, I think you'll see the pit managers eventually and the slot managers start to relax their attitudes toward it. Comp them? Well, it's not a, well, <laughs> they won't have to comp them because they'll bring their <laughs> own, one. Yeah. Two, you're not going to get removed from being – Agitated. If you lose your money or something like that, you're not going to have the drunk stoner get tossed out for knocking the chips off the crap table or something. That's not going to happen. Mm. You know, most cannabis consumers are notoriously nonviolent. Right. <laughs> and, you know, alcohol, people who drink a lot yeah. of alcohol are notoriously aggressive. And so, you know, there yeah. we are. In a town that uh, more than half of the business now is entertainment and food, not gambling, you would think well, that's their own the fault. stoners because the stoners, <laughs> they love to eat. Well, right. that, that's the, yeah, <laughs> that's their own fault. You know, man. not like the drunks, you know. <laughs> Open vape gets you to that fourth round of the buffet. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah. I mean, what the heck? Yeah. No, it's been a really great launch here in Nevada. We're very excited to be here. Um, you know, there are definitely some obstacles in the industry mm -hmm. here in Nevada in terms of testing, but it, my personal opinion is that that's all, it's all a good thing. It makes us be a little bit more strict on ourselves mm -hmm. and more aware of what's going into the products. So, um, yeah, we're, we're very happy to be here in, in Southern Nevada. Do you yeah. cultivate your own strains, or do you have vendors that you purchase them from? So right now, we are creating all of our batches from Deep Roots Harvest Strains, okay. Um, okay. which is about six of their top-selling strains. And our first harvest from our own in-house cultivation okay. is mid-May. So you'll probably see an additional 10 uh, strains coming out onto the open vape varieties um, end of May, Very beginning cool. of June. Any uh, names cool. on any of those? Yeah. So I was just looking at them today. I believe our growers were going with some obscure genetics, okay. um, but I'm also not too familiar with the genetics available here in Nevada. So uh, there was White Nightmare, Star Killer, OG Kush. Um, trying to think of some of the more popular ones. Blue Dream, of course, yeah. Blue Cheese, uh, Master Kush and those are the ones that I can remember off the top of my head. Okay. Some of the classics. Oh, good. Yeah, I think yeah. I've oh, grown good. most of those. Yeah? yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, surprising the uh, tried and true. <laughs> we have a shockingly low number of OGs on the sh dispensary shelf markets here in Las Vegas, considering how popular they are in the Southern California yeah. area. Right. So mm -hmm. we hope 
that you'll be able to uh, help to push those in. Because yeah, we, absolutely. We, we yeah, want I them. just started to notice a few. We want them badly. Yeah, <laughs> there haven't been a lot of. There, I just now finally seen an LA OG. Yeah, and, mm. and considering we have such a, a large uh, California clientele out yeah. here, I mean, they say it's up to twenty percent, and even at like the places like uh, right there on the strip mm -hmm. and right off the strip there they're getting 30 40 percent of people from california sure. you would oh, yeah. think that the ogs yeah. would be a big drive because i i know a guy who yeah. grew out here for years and years and years and had incredible strains and went to california to be with an, a legit company out there and he's like i can't I can't get rid of my strains. All they want is OGs. Yep. That's it. If it's it very no, name if brand. If it ain't OG, yeah. they don't buy it. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So it's like. <laughs> it's what <laughs> sells. Like them, and it's good. a shame. You have to admit, they are good. He had know. some incredible genetic stuff that yeah. he <laughs> right. created that was just, just top-notch yeah. stuff. But Absolutely. In California, they're like, nope, if it ain't OG, we ain't buying it. It <laughs> makes good okay. medicine. Yeah. So. I've been growing an OG myself, a uh, particular L.A. style one for about five years. And, it, and, and I'll tell you what, it's still good. It's still good, and it works, you know, for me. Yeah. Oh, so one and that's why favorites. people like them. You know, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm excited to make it into oil and put it into a vape yeah. pen. <laughs> well, me too. I buy your reserve, and I like I like the reserve. And awesome. Uh, this one's Grape Stopper. Yeah. yeah. My and favorite uh, is uh, I like getting the reserves, but I also like the disposable one devices uh -huh. to try out different flavors mm -hmm. and different batches. Well, I get those for my little senior friends that are new patients. And right. I give them a little disposable one. I let them try it, and it's amazing how much they love this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so easy, you too, know, because you don't have to charge it, and it's yeah. just... Yeah, once yeah, they done, feel like they fit in, like uh, nobody cares. Nobody so cares. Right, right. It, it seems like Open is going yeah. in so many directions right now. You're talking about introducing a line of, I don't want to say edibles, but topicals, consumables. You're branching mm -hmm. out in so many directions. The the crafts and, and the cultivation facility and all that. Is there any, uh, does the team plan to go for a retail location in any state at any point? Or is that not really in the cards at this time for the company? Well, we have uh, licensees in different states that mm -hmm. Open Vape has partnered with. So our headquarters is still in Denver, Colorado, and we are licensed in nine different states as well as Jamaica. So we have some pretty exciting research that's going on down in the University of the West Indies who we have our license through. Um, but in each state, we um, have what's called our flagship stores that are associated with our production license. Um, so out here, that would be the Grove because our production license falls under the Groves. Okay. And we share their cultivation space. Um, and from there, when they produce edibles or anything like that, it wouldn't fall under the open vape umbrella. But in Colorado, we do have um, some other products like the Magic Buzz which is an infused herbal shot with um, THC, of course, and active cannabis oil. Um, an and herbal shot, like an energy drink yeah, kind of kind thing? Of, like a five-hour yeah. energy thing? Right. right. Okay. okay. Similar. So, for example, in our Colorado. Indica one has melatonin and valerian root, the natural der derivative of Valium, okay. uh, to help induce sleep. And that's a really nice way to relax at the end of the night, mm. especially if you suffer from insomnia or any um, chronic pain that keeps you up at night. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's been my personal experience that when you're mixing natural herbs with THC, it almost magnifies the effects of those herbs. So um, THC with spirulina, for example, can provide a really energetic high, mm. and THC with melatonin or valerian root just magnifies the effects of those herbs. Yeah, mm. I prefer mine with mango myself. Oh, that's yeah, that, that can also yeah. magnify I've heard the that. effects, yeah. of course. I'm a mango that. nut. Mm -hmm. It, uh, well, it's almost time for our second break, so uh, we're going to set you off to here, listen to our sponsors here, and, and make sure you go check these guys out and, you know, visit them, because without them, we wouldn't have a show, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. <laughs> a word from our sponsors. Yes. Originating from Las Vegas, Nevada, you're listening to LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. <laughs> Getting Legal offers an informative and simple way for you to get your marijuana card. Why come to Getting Legal to get your marijuana card? We have a 99% approval rating and the lowest price in town. Avoid legal problems. Getting Legal can get you legal fast. Ready for a new start? Come in now and get relief from your chronic conditions affecting your quality of life. Call Getting Legal today at 702-979-9999. That's 702-979-9999. Or visit our website at gettinglegal.com to get your marijuana card today. Hi, 
I'm Armin Yemenijan, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the lowest prices in town and the highest quality medicine. Please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at EssenceVegas.com. You can also call us at 702-978-7575. Once again, the number is 702-978-7575. Attention medical marijuana patients. Do you know what your cannabis actually contains? Are there heavy metals, pesticides, or even mold? And what strength is it really? And is it really what you need? Well, the answers to these questions are simple. Digipath Labs. Digipath Labs is a Nevada state-approved medical marijuana testing facility whose scientists carefully test products for safety and potency all within the state's rigorous mandate. You can buy with confidence and trust knowing Digipath Labs has tested your medicine. If you're a licensed grower, dispenser, extractor, or edibles manufacturer in Nevada and want unparalleled customer service and consumer confidence, go to digipathlabs.com and find out what we can do for you. And as a patient, only go to dispensaries that carry the Digipath Labs seal of approval. That's digipathlabs.com, D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H labs.com. Or call us at 702-209-2429. That's 702-209-2429. LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, live from the studios at LVRocksRadio.com. So, so we've had some interesting conversation here today. Um, we're going to go into our 420 moment right now. For those of you who don't know, new to our show. Uh, we try to we try to honor somebody in the cannabis movement, uh, an activist, somebody who's made positive change in the movement. Uh, every every show, and today we're uh, gonna uh, put it out to Mary Jean Dudson, or more commonly known as Watermelon. Uh, Mary Jean <laughs> Dudson has done it all. She is a well known marijuana activist, stand up comedian, owner of a licorice shop, host of her own internet cannabis cooking show, and to top it all off, she used to be famous for selling watermelon slices in the buff. On a nude beach in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, so, my God, a Canuck. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> that's how she learned her, her nickname, Watermelon. That's how peace Watermelon. most people know her by. So today, along with her licorice shop, the, the Comical Drive Licorice Parlor, she runs a private marijuana bakery for those of us with an MMJ card to flash. I'm a marijuana baker, and I've been doing it since 1993. We are not op- They're not open to the public, only private sales and mail order. They also sell the dispensaries that aren't in Vancouver, Edibles in Vancouver mi- in Vancouver mar- marijuana shops were ban- banned back in 2013. Mm-hmm. So. Hmm. She got arrested right before 9-11 in 2001 for selling ginger snap cookies with too much snap in them. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, she was all over the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. They were trying to hammer her in public, and it ended up totally backfiring. Sales went through the roof as soon as she got out of jail, and she's just been kind of growing ever since and riding that publicity wave. And, you know, I'm happy to see that she was able to to take that and turn it positively because there were so many uh, – I mean, I'm thinking of the, the guy who comes to mind right away was Mark Emery from Canada. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't – his fall from grace was not – he didn't recover so quickly. You know what I mean? This lady seemed to have gotten back on her feet right away and is doing really well for herself and all that. So I really like to see those kind of stories and, and, and nicely. Yeah. And I think they kept Mark Emery in a little bit longer and, Oh, Oh, absolutely. He was like, he was a target. He, they tried to make a, an example out of him. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? They actually went up and, Grabbed yeah, they grabbed his ass and brought him back from Canada for doing something that was completely legal in the country he lived in, you know. But the fact is, it's not legal here, so mm-hmm. they went and extradited him and yeah. put him in jail out here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah we're just great. yeah, not not a good one there. So, but if you happen to be in Vancouver, go look up uh, Mary Jean Dudson, aka Watermelon, and if you happen to have an MMJ card, go check out her shop. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so I got a story coming out of Colorado. Okay. Now, Colorado, they uh, they have full legalization and they have a medical program. Um, but like Nevada, they allow tourists to come in so with the recreational, but they only allow the tourists to buy a quarter ounce at a time, mm. and they can possess up to one ounce of marijuana. 
So they're thinking about getting rid of that and treating the tourists just like any other recreational patient out there in Colorado. Um, Colorado pot regulators now say that tourists carrying small amounts of pot home aren't Colorado's main marijuana diversion problem. No, so, no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not the tourists taking a little bit home for themselves, you know. Right. It's well, so what are they proposing? Um, they're they're proposing removing those limits and allowing those patients, you know, mm. the people in Colorado, the tourists, to purchase up to an ounce at a time, just like anybody else. Well, right. considering they're allowed to have an ounce at a time in their possession anyway, wouldn't it behoove them to allow them to purchase said ounce at one time? That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't understand. You're going to have to go out the door and then come back in three times if you want to. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I mean. I'm not gonna walk. I'm probably not gonna walk in and buy an ounce at one time. But it just seems mm. like that seems like misinterpretation of legislative in, uh, intent when the bill was passed. Why yeah. would you? You know, why would it be worded that way in the first place? It, well, they didn't want the tourists taking pot home. And uh, oh, what they okay. Say here is they figured the lawmakers figured that visiting tourists wouldn't blaze through a full ounce before heading home. An ounce of pot is sometimes compared to a keg of beer because it's difficult for most users to finish in a few days. <laughs> well, there yeah. is a little bit of truth behind that, I guess, but it's recreational yeah. now, and you're not necessarily splitting a beer with yourself. Right. You right. buy a, ke- or a, a keg of beer, yeah. excuse me. You buy a keg of beer for a party mm-hmm. of friends. So yeah. if you are designated to buy the cannabis for the party, then you should be able to buy a keg of cannabis. Right. Yeah. And then <laughs> when, what happens when you're traveling with a big group and, you know? Right. Well, you probably yeah, cut down on lines, too, right. in Colorado. That way you're not going to the shop over and over again exactly. to reach that ounce yeah, limit. If you're at the ski lodge, you're not leaving for a week. I mean, you might smoke an ounce. Right. And if you don't, you leave the rest for the maid. That's what I used to do in Jamaica. <laughs> That's I used sweet. to leave the little bit there, and, and next year I'd come back, and my cab driver would have my paper and my pipe and everything else. Nice. You know, give my weed away. <laughs> Yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah so but anyways, uh, I, I had a little uh, news from Canada since we were talking about Canada. Uh, Canada plans, uh, you know, we had this big United Nations conference a couple weeks ago that Mike mm-hmm. was talking about be- before he had his surgery. Uh, and Canada is planning on introducing legislation in the spring of 2017 to uh, legalize marijuana in Canada. Uh, as we know, pr- uh, Justin Trudeau campaigned last year on the promise of legalize and regulate regulate rec- recreational marijuana for all of Canada. So, um, and that and in that he said that it was a failed system and he was going to help to remove the c- criminal element. So, um, you know, watermelon is uh, you know, <sighs> people like her and others that are standing up and Canada is setting the example, jumping ahead of Obama. Uh, it almost in the last few weeks, I sort of think Obama's starting to lighten up a little bit. Did you see his joke at the correspondence dinner? Yeah, I mean, you know, because yeah. he's been ho- so hard on us, you know, and, mm-hmm. and now he's starting, uh oh, Canada's going to well, legalize it now, too. So. If he goes through this in spring 2017, like he yeah. says he does, that means what? If we get our way, there will be numerous more American states that will already have yeah. recreationally legalized, also, thereby furthering his argument to continue to push it not like it should matter but you know our policies reflect one another and if they fully legalize they have such a wide border with us i think it would uh, right. potentially well, have an impact yeah, on our recreational uh, markets they're upstaging us on this and they you know this is a good thing for them and they know these things are going to happen you know they know these things are inevitable and if i was obama i'd want to i'd want to be able to say i was the president that straightened out this shit and ended that war or ended this war on drugs or whatever I would think he'd want to do that. So yeah, um, we'll see. I hope he does. I, I, I does. for a long time, I thought he was going to do this at the end of his term because one, he wants le- he wants to leave a legacy, and, and let's face it, his his main push for Obamacare isn't going to be a legacy to him. Right. So th- right now, this is like his last hurrah, and yeah, he has the Middle East hasn't gone so well either. Plus, I always figured that the Democrats would kind of push him into it because it it allows them to say, "Hey, we just we just changed this law. You don't want to turn this over to a Republican president now to to right. mess it all up, you know." So I, I kind of saw this well, as a political game you years know, honestly, and years ago. That they, right. I'm not worried about like uh, I'm not worried about a Trump presidency overturning a weed law. But what I would be concerned about is, let's say. I mean, you got two guys, Chris Christie and Rudy Giuliani, who are both gunning for the attorney general or Homeland Secretary or Homeland Security chair job. They're both qualified for both jobs, and they would both be terrible for recreational cannabis. Mm-hmm. So that's the side of his administration that kind of freaks me out. And because of that, yeah, like you said, I would hope some executive action. I hate that word, executive action. But, you know, I'm, I'm uh, 
biased on this issue, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll cherry pick this and I'll, I'll, I'll ask him well, to do it. For I don't, sure. I don't know about Giuliani, but uh, it, you know, because he, he's more of a traditional Republican than uh, uh, old than organized Chris crime Chris uh, or Chris organized Chris crime prosecutor. He oh, yeah. he perceives the drug trade and this and that. And he, he he would eat us alive. I feel. Yeah, but I, Chris Christie's like any man's dog you want to hunt, you know, and I mean he jumps all over the place, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would think that. You know, we'd be able to talk him into whatever. You know, well, he's come know he's come out Giuliani. publicly against it. Yeah, he hates he yeah, hates he the hates he hates the dope and he, he hates the dopers. It, but, uh, he, he hated Trump too. You know, I mean. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. This I is mean, true. Like, come on now, you know. It's like okay, yeah. any man's dog that wants to hunt. That's yeah. the way I kind of see him. You know, but neither one of them. I mean, hopefully. Hopefully we'll come up with some good people, you know. No, no doubt. matter yeah, who gets elected. Let's just whatever. hope whatever happens that we don't yeah. move backwards at all. Yeah, that's the hope. Know. Yeah, thank you. I don't yeah, think we will, but you know, let's to finish what you started to say. <laughs> yeah. You know, continue to join our site, weekend702.org, and uh, join us. Get involved because we make the difference. We really do. We really make the difference. So. Well, here's a weird kind of story out of Alaska. I mean, kind of ties in with Colorado a little bit, but. Uh, the movement is coming from Alaska. Both states are looking at legalizing uh, cannabis clubs, the ability to medicate indoors that's attached to a dispensary or some kind of uh, retail location that sells cannabis products. And that's never been tried before in the United States. They've had the cafes in like Amsterdam, and I think there's a couple places in Portugal you might be able to do it. But really, it's it's it, it's never even been tried here except for illegally in California. Um, the Alaskan Marijuana Control Board is considering when and how to define on-site on consumption. They're going to put it up for public comment before they finalize the uh, the language. And they say marijuana cafes would only be permitted in conjunction with this existing marijuana retail store on the same premises, either indoor or outdoor, but would require a separate entrance or separate serving area. Very similar to how their laws are set up to like a brewery if you have a beer garden. Yeah. You can go ahead and sell the beer to the public in addition to having your restaurant, but you have to have a separate little entrance just like we used to have a separate entrance for our restaurants when the smoking law was in place. But anyway, so that's how they're going to do it. But strangely, they're going to allow people to buy one gram of marijuana, edibles with only 10 milligrams of THC, or 0.25, that's one quarter of a gram of marijuana concentrates, to consume on site, and they would not be permitted to bring their own marijuana to smoke on site. They would be required to leave any unfinished marijuana behind to be destroyed, that's and right. happy hours would not be permitted. Oh my marijuana God. lounges will be permitted to sell food and non-alcoholic beverages. Oh my God. So... Once again, so, they're they're funky up there. That marijuana control board is very strange the way they operate. They passed a residency requirement law after saying they weren't going to. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, and it, it well, just is what it is. It, it's funny because just a couple of weeks ago we reported on this similar story, right? And they didn't want anything to do with it. They weren't going to. There was only one. Yeah, they're all over the place. Uh, so now they're changing their tune because they're getting a lot of pressure. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they'll continue to change because some of that is downright stupid, like having, oh, the weed has to be destroyed. You didn't consume it. That's right. <laughs> I destroyed it in a bunch of small fires. It's ridiculous. It sounds more like a tasting room, too. I mean, a gram, a single oh. gram. I yeah, can roll that up in a big stupid. joint. Right. Totally stupid. Or right. 0.25 uh, and concentrate. I can oh. dab that and, like, what, two, three minutes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. You know, and that's the whole who thing. Comes up with this I, stuff? I, people who have nothing to do with cannabis yeah, are they, writing the cannabis rules, yeah, and that's what what's Everybody disappointing. Just like when we have our, our uh, gaming control board problems here, there's right. a lot of gaming control officials who aren't gaming people, and it reflects our policy, and that's why we're falling behind a lot of other right. jurisdictions in that, too. But I'll get into that some other day. Yeah, well, that's uh, why we talk about regional stories and regional news, even though we're the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Uh, these are related to us, and uh, hopefully all of, us, all of us will straighten out these and we'll eventually build a model that we can use across the nation and have true reciprocity. Oh. Right? There's kind of a, a weird story out of Oregon talking about putting RFID chips on plants to prevent diversion. They believe, yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. They yeah. want to introduce like but a multi- But kind of cool in a way. Sure, in theory, yeah. but an RFID chip system is just going to track the actual plants. It's not going to. No, it's not a camera not. system to check weight all the way up. And even no. if it did, it wouldn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, they're spending millions of dollars for a system that will have no no repercussions whatsoever. It's kind of like the blue card system where they were registering mm -hmm. our guns in Clark County, and it led to solving zero crimes. So they ended up repealing the law because it just cost a bunch of money. This is exactly what's going to happen here. And They'll go through the process. It's an upgrade from the barcode that we that we already have. Right. It's here. supposed to right. be an upgrade, but. 
I just think it's going to cost a bunch of money and, and end up backfiring eventually. And, I mean, and, we'll see. And add a price to the, the medicine. And, and, and yeah. Oh, they've already said the they've already said it right it. here in the thing that, it, oh, the cost will be passed on to the consumer through these taxes and this, that, and the other. And it is what it is. They're already looking to other states for that. But Oregon was supposed to be the cheaper of those two. It's cheaper than Washington. And now when they start kind of chopping away at that, it's going to take away their competitive advantage to draw, to draw business across the border. Mm-hmm. So. Well, Colorado yeah. has those RFID yeah. tags, and it has added a, a large expense to uh, the yeah. process. Ha- has it shown any benefit as they can no, foresee it? No, because even the inspectors, when they come in, they don't come in checking those tags. They come yeah. in looking at the big picture, high level stuff. Then why do they have them if they're not, you know, if they're they're just there to pacify the, the powers that be? It's my yeah. personal opinion that there were there were political ties there there you yeah, go probably that's is. it i think we got an nfl story that we got Kurt oh yeah yeah there was a the kid who got drafted like to, like well, throwing a little well, his name was what laramie tunsil is that his name tunsil yeah uh the uh, bong and gas mask <laughs> <laughs> oh what a what a stupid thing to lose a bunch of money over he was supposed to be how, how high was his draft uh, his projected draft pick before the picture surfaced uh, well, I'm not sure that they, he was supposed to be, you know, in the top five, I believe, and oh, he man. dropped to number thirteen and yeah, went to the I, Dolphins. I, oh, he, he still got first he round. Was number yeah. two choice at one time. Yeah. And uh, then he went to six, I think. Yeah. And then lucky thirteen. Well, some somebody some of the, somebody obviously targeted him. It showed up on his yeah. Instagram and and as this and that. And the fact is, this was something that happened years ago. It wasn't even anything current. Yeah. Right. And it's oh, the picture that, was taken years ago. Yeah, it was right. from over two years ago. And the team that drafted him, the Dolphins, they knew about this incident already, and they said, "Yeah, it was years ago. We've been watched since then, and he's had no other incidents." So what was that running back they had that had all that trouble? Ricky, Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams. Yeah. That's right, the super running back who got penalized yeah. so often. So they've been through the ringer with marijuana policy through yeah. the NFL more than any team I would think the Dolphins so yeah. you know, just one of those things wow. yeah so they, yeah, they, they um, took him and you know you know he lost a little bit of money because of something you know dumb but you know at least somebody out there gave him a chance and he well, didn't fall too far so and uh, speaking but, of well, football and local news yeah, we only got a couple yeah, minutes on uh, minute Kurt's got yeah. announcements yeah. Yeah. yeah we got a couple announcements so we're gonna have to get to some of these other okay. these other stories here next week so um Upcoming events we got first Friday this Friday. Uh, we're out there behind the Arts Factory. Also the uh, Thrive Dispensaries. They'll be holding an event uh, right down there on Commerce. Come visit us at the Arts Factory, and we'll give you a flyer to show where that is too. They're having some food trucks down yeah, there. Yeah, right so on. if you're not a licensed patient yet, you can go to this uh, new dispensary grand opening. They're not going to have products there to show you, but you'll be able to see what the facility is like and how it's laid out, and and they'll and they'll talk to you if you want to become a patient. So uh, it's very interesting. You'll talk to some vendors, too. Open Vape will be there. Yeah. So, yeah. So come on by our booth, pick up your new dope soaps, and then Mm. stop on over by Thrive and, you know, pick, you know. Talk to talk to them over at Open Vape and the other vendors that are out and there. And we got to so thank yeah. them for sponsoring or helping to sponsor our uh, our last party. Yeah, also, yeah, we yeah, hope exactly. to see at the next one. Thank you so much for that. Of course, yeah. support us. So, and then uh, we have our our patient support group uh, on Saturday. Uh, the second Saturday, so not this Saturday, but the Saturday afterwards, and that's over located two doors down from the source, and it goes from two to four. You can find it on our website, weekend702.org. That's on the what southeast corner of uh, Sahara and Rainbow. Sahara and Rainbow, yes. So, and they they have that whole center there, and they're kind enough to donate us a nice big yes. room to use for our patients' meetings there too. And any anybody that comes by and is a patient, you get a uh, coupon for twenty percent off one item in there so you can go in there and you can try the new open uh open reserve there and get 20 percent off of it so and that meeting's out. open to non-patients so if you're not a patient you can come to this and you can learn about what's going on that's right okay. so uh we got patient's choice coming up this month on may 28th so we'll have more information on that on our website so and then hemp fest coming up on june 4th las vegas Already. Hemp fest. yeah it's mm-hmm. like wow. a <laughs> month away I mean, it's like it just snuck yeah. up on us just yep. like that so yeah. Yeah, and the look. Ch- be sure to check out our website, weekend702.org. We're constantly putting up uh, all the things that are happening in town there. And uh, we will be throwing some events here probably end of May. We'll have another potluck and June, a potluck. And then we got some big things at work for our for our eight-year anniversary party in July. So make sure you yeah. keep it up. I'm, I'm trying to book a place right now that will just blow it away yeah okay, it'll make yeah. It, it'll make uh, our 420 party look and uh and help <laughs> us promote our new radio spot here uh lbrocksradio.com uh this is our new home and uh we welcome our regular listeners and we welcome our new listeners and help us spread the word and let people know about nevada, nevada cannabis news hour 
on every week live Tuesdays and then of course on YouTube all week long. That's yeah. it. With that, we'll uh, we'll.